We can just ease through here, see no other hunters, and find something special, hopefully. We don't have to worry too much about access. I mean, there is some checkerboard private in here, but there's plenty of public to hunt versus where Brandon's hunting and it's really checkerboarded and really tricky to figure out access. Without this walk-in area, I mean, a lot of this BLM that we're hunting, we couldn't access. They'd be completely landlocked. And we're hoping to have a shot just on the other side. Hopefully they haven't moved. It's coming towards us. We'd seen this buck the other night. We filmed him and he was actually on some private. And then we came back and he moved over onto some public. Is that him? I'm on him. I don't know if it's him. Welcome back to K-Prong Radio and the TRCP Morning Show. Well, the Wyoming draw results came out over the weekend, and if you're like me, you're crying in your coffee this morning. So, here's a little bit of a pick-me-up from Wyoming's very own Dave Munsick. Underneath the bucking feet that roll on down the road Time is standing sideways and oceans used to roll. I see a sage and hope and space may be all that you see. But it's the place I make my home and here's what it means to me. It's wagon tracks that roll you back into another time. Looking for treasure you think you're gonna find. High and lonesome out between her rivers and her peaks. Just the wind that's filling in the breath inside of me. Why oh me? Why oh me? You've seen me through some hard times. I've seen you at your best. Why oh Stay with you, cause I know you will stay forever west. Yeah, his horn's almost touching the middle. Well, no go. End of the road. You know, we're sitting here in the middle of a giant tract of BLM ground. Over 200 square miles of public land surrounds us from this point. When people first come out west, one of the things that surprises them the most is how many roads are out here and how complicated the access can be. We have the highways, of course, paved highways and freeways. Then it goes down to the county roads, many of which are dirt. And then it goes down to even smaller roads, local roads, and two-track roads. But it can be very difficult to come out here and figure out how to get from point A to point B on some of these roads. Anybody who's opened up a map and looked at all the red lines on that map, look like roads when you first open it up, knows that 
accessing public lands can be really complicated. Access issues have changed over time, even within our lifetimes. Access historically to private lands was pretty easy. So you went to church with somebody, you could generally get access to their place, either by knocking on the door or just chatting with them when you saw them, in addition to public lands. And so, you know, I think it really started to change as you got into the 1980s and 90s. And the U.S. population continued to increase. And also we started to see more properties changing hands, people from outside areas moving in, which has just continued to happen over time. Also, you know, wildlife's become a valuable resource in a way that it didn't used to be. And looking at those forests again, I think they're gonna be 18, 19 inches. You know, you can still get access to private lands by knocking on the door, but it's not as easy as it used to be. While sort of overall hunting numbers, you might argue, have declined since the 1980s, the pressure on public lands from the hunting public has increased because the areas that are open to everybody have, have gotten smaller, and that's really our public lands. Morning. Morning. Tyson Pinnacum. I'm Brandon Mason, good to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm uh, a antelope hunting in the area, and okay. I've got some access questions for you. If we could take a look at the antelope units first. Right in this neck of the woods okay. here. Okay, yeah, so uh, if we can find a map for it, uh, I have this one on hand. So you guys have maps pretty much for almost everywhere, right? In the yep. state, if we'd ever yep. need a for, different one. Yep, all the quadrangles in the state. Is there a particular area within there that you're trying to get to? Well, you know, just trying to find as much public access as possible. I've heard that there's some access easements, mm -hmm. like through private land. Yeah. And so if you have any of those, it would be a helpful starting point, I okay. guess. Yeah, so some of the good country uh, is towards the western end of it. So if you're looking at your GPS, mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to see because you'll be right on a chunk of private and there's an access road right here okay where blm has a a public easement and you can get over into this stuff otherwise you'd have to come all the way over and then drive up and back into it and then um, and then are there signs marking the easement or even little markers at all or is it just kind of no one coming in here talking to you or just kind of knowing where they're at that one there is not a marker like you said you kind of have to know where it's at I'm just personally curious, do you have paper records of one of these easements that we could look at yeah, and actually do. see? There's about 90,000 easements that the Bureau of Land Management and the Forest Service have. The vast majority of them, 50,000 about, have not been digitized, they're in paper file. There's also these things called county roads, which are another form of easement. If you go back 100 years ago when one was created, it might have been forgotten, or maybe it was maintained way back then and it's no longer maintained, and so it looks no different than somebody's private lane. And that's really confusing, but it's also really important because county roads are open to the public. I'm third generation. I'm Galen Bird. Uh, my family and I ranch here, and some of my family's been here since 39. Can't imagine the changes, you know, that you guys have seen over the years. I mean, one with just cattle ranching in general, and then on top of that, hunting issues. Well, when I was young, my folks just let everybody in. They just, no trespass fee or anything. Then somewhere along the way, they started charging a minimal fee then it just got so there were too many problems gates being left open people driving off the road not staying where they were supposed to trash shooting holes in water tanks windmills just too many problems to where we just shut it down and then my husband and i started outfitting even a, a guy who's trying to do the right thing sometimes screws up and ends up in the wrong place there are places the county road runs through private property so you can drive through it but you can't hunt. I can see where that could get confusing. Now I think a lot of the public land's getting overhunted. 
is what everybody says, are overcrowded, maybe, and people are looking for a way to get away from it. The term easement sometimes is a scary term to people. What is an easement and what is an access easement? An easement's a legal right that allows uh, one party to cross another party's land, um, usually associated with a road or a trail. It encumbers the title of that parcel of land and, and runs with the land in perpetuity. And we're talking about access easements, which are different, of course, than conservation easements, which is a whole other topic. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, the Regional Office Land Status Department. We maintain records for the entire region, so all of Montana, Northern Idaho, and some grasslands in North Dakota. These are the land status title files. These are um, the deeds are in here, the recorded documents, as well as a lot of information that, you know, supports what happened during the transaction. The deeds would be recorded and kept in a county courthouse as well. These are the road rights of way the United States is acquired to cross other people's land to get to the national forest. And we have thousands of those into the cage. And wow. yeah, and so <laughs> wow. this entire wall here, this entire wall is all acquired road rights away for the entire region. Wow. I'd say 99% of them are right here. I have the honor of maintaining them all <laughs> and keeping track of them all. Are these scanned in anywhere too? Or uh, much some of them are scanned, yeah, and we're scanning them all the time, but we also have to keep these hard copy files. Sure. Yeah, yep. and it, these are official records and we're, we, we still keep them all. Just how many paper records are down in this building? Oh, geez. You know, the rights away alone, there's approximately 6,000 files in here, cases. Each of these is a case, right, where we've acquired a, a right from either an individual or a timber company or a railroad company or whatever. So one road could have 10 files associated with it, gotcha. right? Because we had to acquire pieces and parts to get the entire road. This is dumbfounding. And this is just one region. It's one region, yeah. How total regions are there for the Forest Service? There are nine. Okay. Yeah. Well, Joel, you made it into camp. Picked you up from the airport. We're here warming ourselves by the, the wood stove. It it's, feels pretty good. It's putting out some heat. Yeah. It's not too cold outside, but it's just nice to take the chill off a little bit. We're finally here on the antelope hunt in an area that, I'm, that I've hunted before, but there's still a lot of places that I've, I haven't explored yet. Looking at the maps and, and, and looking at an Onyx, but there's a lot of mixed ownership. Yep. There's some state walk-in access areas. It's gonna be really interesting tomorrow to just try and figure out where we can get to and you know where we can go find some antelope and help, hopefully have a successful hunt. I'm real excited about it. Me too. Dead end road, no through traffic, and we're trying to get obviously through this area, so try again. Many of the lines that people see as roads on our maps, there isn't a designation between public or private. And the reason for that is there's very few road data sets that exist in the whole country that classify roads as public or private. Most of the time, road data sets are classified according to road service type, like paved versus gravel versus dirt, or they're classified according to what type of vehicle can travel down them. So like passenger car, ATV, 
uh, high clearance vehicle, that sort of thing. And so there are times where one of our customers is looking at a road on the map and they're standing there on the location, on the landscape, looking at a road and there's nothing there to tell them I can or cannot go there. We got another county road here. Let's go off on this one. Oh man, look at that. And then look behind them on the hill, way back there, there's a bunch of antelope. Looks like a pretty good goat there, doesn't he? Yeah. You got nice prongs. We saw a shooter antelope. They're a little spooked today. It's windy, it's overcast. And we're just watching to see what he's going to do because he's running around like crazy right now. So hopefully he'll settle down and we can make a play on him. He's definitely a shooter though. Yeah, he's great. Nice and wide, nice prongs, fairly tall. What do you think? I think we keep going down this two track and veer left on that one that we were looking at on the map and just see what happens. Because that'll take us close to him, I think. You want to drop a pin? Where is that? Oh, look at here. Here's that structure. Oh, there you go. Yeah, look at that. Well, perfect then. You know, it's nice that the BLM's completed their trouble management plan in here, so all these routes are highlighted on the map and designated. Take some of the guesswork out of it. Yeah, well, only 20% of BLM lands have had their travel management plans completed, which is where they go in and actually identify where the routes are, you know, designate them, and then identify, you know, what they're open to, like trucks and four-wheelers and foot traffic and things like that. It's nice to see that here. It makes it easier to figure out where you want to go and where you can get to without having to just go out and drive around and guess. So when you're looking at a travel management plan on OnX and you see those roads designated, but then you also see some other two tracks that aren't maybe part of that, what does that signify? <laughs> <laughs> but oftentimes those are unauthorized routes. Generally ranchers, like they can go access their improvements, right? So they got a water tank or something they can drive out there but the public is supposed to stay on designated routes and in some places you have people you know driving off road and creating routes in a place that's dry like this you know assuming that the agency has done their job and, and gone through this process thoroughly like that should be make it pretty clear about like what what you can drive on and what you can't mm -hmm. and then also like we're heading into a walk-in so it's a walk-in walk area access. but there are some routes that are open across the walk-in area which is really nice too, because there's some landlocked state and BLM land in here that it helps connect. So it opens up those, those landlocked federal lands too, in addition to making these private lands available to the public. Yeah, I mean, without this walk-in area that we're partially hunting today, I mean, a lot of this BLM that we're hunting, we couldn't access. It'd be completely landlocked. Yeah. So in the access programs that the Game and Fish Department in Wyoming manages, which ones are they? There's more than one, I know that. We have the Access Yes program, and those are short-term leases, basically, where we work with landowners to get access for hunters and anglers. In 2021, there was more than 2.6 million acres of private and landlocked public land that was enrolled in our program. There's about 60 hunter management areas across the state. There's too many to count walking areas. And those are usually smaller areas where if you have a license, whether it's hunting or fishing, if it's open or what you have, you can just go hunting. You don't have to go ask. You don't have to get special permission anywhere. The department really is going out of its way to try to build those relationships with landowners and provide some access for the public. And in those programs, the landowner still retains all the rights of, you know, I want deer hunted, but I don't want pheasant hunted. And so we signed it up just for deer hunting. Or I don't want you driving on roads, but you can park over here. And so they have control of their land still. We manage the hunters for them. We're gonna make a play on a really nice bug that's bedded over the hill. We're gonna get to this low spot and we're hoping to have a shot just on the other side. Hopefully they haven't moved. This 
hope this little guy gets down in there. He's almost out of sight. When he's out of sight, we're gonna motor. Got our exercise for the day. Well, like we just finished that stock, which failed, but we see the antelope on another chunk of land, but it's land that we can hunt. Yep. And knowing that definitely by looking at our map on our phone is just man that's nice yeah it puts a layer of transparency on everything so everybody knows what's public what's private what's open what's closed so if people are breaking the rules they don't have any excuses anymore at the same time it opens up a ton of outdoor opportunities that we previously weren't aware of Buck, it's just not, not quite there. The length is just a tick short. The search continues. Let's go find a next level or Yeah, this cattle guard changes over into private, so we we're just on mostly BLM. So this is a county road, and part of the way we can tell that is, I mean, this isn't a very well-maintained county road, but this county road runs into a very well-maintained county road in an intersection up here. So obviously county road, anybody can, can drive on, right? All right, so we just came off the state so went across BLM, now we're back on state. We're gonna be heading on to private here for about a mile, then we're back on, on BLM. And we're still on this county road. Some of them are just two tracks. You can't tell them apart from you know a private lane or a public two track on, on BLM land. Like sometimes it can be really hard to tell them apart. If you have questions, check with the county just to make sure you're safe and legal. You see this finished products very easy to use it's colorful what are some of the challenges for onyx behind the scenes so we're gathering up data from uh, all levels of government agencies from local to federal land management agencies and we're also sometimes getting data from private companies so we go for the most authoritative most up-to-date most complete data but in many cases, the data was created for the agency that's developing the database or maintaining the database. And so it's not necessarily targeted for a general public land user. So oftentimes the information that people most want to know, such as can I go there, is not actually built into the data set. These different data sets do not fit together perfectly like puzzle pieces. There are gaps, there's overlaps and we have to utilize other information sources to get all the different data sources to fit together nicely. And so we have to translate all of that into a common language so that no matter where somebody is tapping on the map, whether they're tapping on state land or forest service, private land or BLM land, it all presents in the same way to the customer. So enter in 
the Mapland Act, and you're the first person that brought this to my attention, and it was new information to me, and I was excited to hear about it. So Mapland directs the federal agencies to digitize and make publicly available information about easements and reservations across private land to help the public understand where they can and cannot go to access their public lands, as well as providing clarity to reduce conflict with landowners. The Forest Service has a publicly available online map viewer where you can see the easements we've collected. It's still a work in progress, so they're not all there. We're making a concerted effort to get this stuff digitized. It's a huge project. It's time consuming and tedious, but uh, we're working at it best we can, trying to get this available to the public and ourselves. You know, this is also a huge benefit to the agency. It's really foundational to everything we do. They've given us a four year time frame to get that done. What we're doing is we're working with all of our field offices westwide to locate the physical case files, scanning them, we'll create the GIS files, and then it'll be published out to a public facing website and then that same data in the raw format will also be published for the, the mobile app developers. That concludes the antelope hunt. The antelope are grouping up for the winter, so it's a good chance for a big buck like this to come out of no man's land. Well, here's our nice Wyoming public land buck, over 16 inch or pushing 17 inch buck. Just a dandy for South Central Wyoming. Research pays off. Research and patience can pay off on a big old buck like this. It's just a great experience hunting an area where we don't have to worry too much about access versus where Brandon's hunting and it's really checkerboarded and really tricky to figure out access. Aha! Uh -huh. Undeeded land. Well, good thing because we're not on deeded land. This is a case in point where sometimes you can't rely on, a lot of times you can't rely on signs to tell you the story because this sign, like that, in the post right here, is uh, just a post. And this, is, <laughs> and this is public land where you can hunt. Right, you can actually go on here, on public land, then up the trail a ways. Um, you gotta stop, that's what that sign's for. Yep. On deeded land. About a quarter mile land. public yep. that way. Yep. Interesting. Yeah, cool. Got just a little more than a mile private, then we're back onto BLM, and then we're going to head into some state. But we're really going to head back into a pretty good block of public coming up. So we are adding in additional easements as they become available from the agencies. And these easements and right-of-ways, in some cases, do provide for public access across private lands because of an easement that was purchased or retained years ago. And so it's really important for the public to stay on the easement and not travel off the easement. You know, they're typically only the width of the road or the width of a trail. And so they are for 
moving along to get you from point A to point B across that private land so that you can get to a piece of public land beyond. There's a trail on both sides, it looks like. And we've got a little bit of state land there on the north still, so. I think most everybody has some sort of an app now that shows land ownership. As long as those are kept updated, should help. It's very important that the sportsman's community you have a good and positive working relationship with the landowner community. Doing things like land exchanges where we can consolidate holdings of public lands to make larger blocks of them. Now on our place, it'd be easy enough for us to do it, block it all up at the east end that's accessible with the county road. We have really good funding source now with the Land and Water Conservation Fund being permanent and fully funded. BLM is now getting 60 to $70 million a year to purchase easements and lands to support access. But also beyond that, I love to see the counties, you know, be able to, to digitize where those county roads are, to help clarify that issue. I'd love to see the states digitize their information about easements. As we say, it's a wild west out there, and every state's a little different, every access issue's a little different. I think it's just going to be a huge benefit to sportsmen in being able to, with confidence, know that you can be on a certain parcel of land. I think if we just go slowly, I mean, I think let's walk around and then kind of side hill. Nice. Whew. I thought that was a failed stock for sure. Good job, man. He was close too. Nice shoot. He came, he was coming right at us. Really? Oh yeah, he's a pretty buck. Nice buck. The new rifle did the number. First, first animal with it. Yeah, look at him, huh? Been fighting. Oh yep, he's all broken up. Man, sweet. Let's get him in a better position so we can show everybody else. Well, Joel, this has been a long journey of an antelope hunt. <laughs> it's really fun to you know hunt these things in a unit that has pretty tough access. You know, there's quite a bit of public land, but there's a yep. lot of private, and we had to work really hard to navigate it and find a place where we could get in and hunt. And yep. But once we figured it out, we started, you know, finding animals all over the place and, and got it done. And we have not seen a shortage of antelope. It's been, it's been great. Yeah.
Well, thanks for coming along. And remember, fair chase is the only way to hunt and take trophy big game. We'll see you next time right here on Eastman's. You said it's the 11th, right? Yeah. Let's see, that's what I grew up on, Badlands.